Before the time of the dinosaurs, this is how the Earth looked. The Earth has undergone numerous and significant changes. The origin of life from non-life remains a major scientific puzzle. However, scientists do now believe that life on Earth began about 3.8 billion years ago, which is our best prediction. However, let's start at the beginning and travel back in time before we do that. Both DS and its ability to accommodate life weren't always present. Our solar system was a cloud of gas and dust called a solar nebula around 4.6 billion years ago. Around 4.5 billion years ago, the solar system settled into its current configuration and Earth's rocky core formed, initially with heavy elements colliding and binding together dense material, sank to the protoplanet center and lighter. The Earth had a significant impact at some point during the development of the crust. The moon was created when fragments of the infant planet were sent into space and placed in orbit around it. When the moon was still quite close to Earth and likely created enormous tides of more than 300 meters, tremendous hurricane force winds blasted over the globe and the evolutionary process started. This period is known as the Paleoarchean Epoch. It was a horrible location on the new Earth. Huge mountains and volcanoes were generated during this period as a result of the movement of the planet's enormous rock plates caused by the mantle's flow beneath the crust. Massive volumes of lava and fumes were constantly spewing out of that. In addition, the waters produced the reefs. The protoplanet at this period hardly had an atmosphere, but as it cooled, gravity caught gases from the volcanoes and many comet and asteroid impacts led to the arrival of water on Earth. In addition to water, our planet's location in relation to its star, the Sun, is also crucial for the emergence of life. Earth is in what is known as the Goldilocks Zone, which places it close enough to the Sun for liquid water to exist on the Earth's surface. Before life even started or had a chance to exist on Earth, radiation from our star was the planet's main source of energy. Theoretically, solar energy provided the catalyst that changed basic organic molecules into more complex ones, changing them into the building blocks of biology and life, much as it does today. The early Earth had little to no oxygen, if any at all. Ribonucleic acid and nucleic acid, which are found in all living cells, rather than deoxyribonucleic acid, are likely the building blocks of life, which most likely formed in oceanic alkaline vents. An organic molecule that, at some time, contained genetic data and instructions for protein production. Although the specific mechanism is still unknown, during this period, two major groupings of life, bacteria and archaea, rose from a common ancestor. Tiny bacteria and single-celled creatures developed over billions of years and started consuming methane some 3.6 billion years ago. Virus evidence was discovered near the 3 billion year milestone, although others contend that viruses may have been on Earth before life as we know it. When a kind of microorganisms called as cyanobacteria emerged with the capacity to transform light and water into energy and release, the world began to move toward habitability. Between 2.4 and 2.1 billion years ago, something extremely amazing and tragic happened. Dissolved oxygen caused iron in the seas to rust and settle to the sea floor, which generated spectacular red, banded iron formations. The toxic waste that these advanced photosynthetic cyanobacteria created in this early cycle of life caused anaerobic microorganisms to die out, producing the Earth's first mass extinction, also known as the Big Oxidation Event. How is oxygen poisonous? You might be wondering how oxygen became harmful due to the high amounts and overpowered any live germ or bacterium at the time's natural antioxidant defense mechanism. In essence, these cyanobacteria, which appeared as algae, ate themselves to extinction and brought about a worldwide extinction. But 2.3 billion years ago, the worst was about to happen. The Earth may have frozen over as a result of the massive oxidation event, and when the planet's volcanic activity slowed down over time, 
and the ice melted, more oxygen was directly released into the atmosphere. This gave place to the Neoproterozoic Epoch, which was characterized by protozoans like Melana and Paramecium amoebas. William developed the first animal cells that were distinct from plant cells, and these cells started eating. The Earth froze during this time when the first herbivores emerged. At least twice more, but life finds a way around these setbacks to progress. Fungi worms and other tiny, bilaterally symmetrical organisms manage to live and evolve throughout this time. Fast forward to the Paleozoic era, when sophisticated life forms, such as fish, arthropods, and mollusks, started to emerge. Echinoderms, plants, and air-breathing creatures began to appear on the surface of the Earth, and move on to the land. At the commencement of the Devonian period, ferns were the predominant land plant, and sharks, horseshoe crabs, and starfish started to populate the waters. The cephalus piece and crabs was a jawless fish with bone armor from prehistoric times. Hagfish and ratfish, which are large, also evolved. This gave way to the Carboniferous Epoch, when it was believed that Earth's environment was tropical with no seasonal variation, and gave rise to a new generation of unusual species. At this time, the Earth was covered with plants, and the organic remains of these plants waste eventually produced the world's first coal deposit, which people continue to burn today. As these forests grew, the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere rose, reaching a peak of about 35% as opposed to the previous 21%. Present day, in order to protect themselves from the high levels of oxygen present at the time, some animals and insects may have evolved in water and grown larger. One of these giant insects, known as Meganeurosis, which closely resembles modern dragonflies and had wingspans of 63 to 68 centimeters, was visible in the skies during this time. One extremely well-preserved fossil of a large dragonfly that perished. It was determined that I'd had a wingspan of 0.75 meters 320 million years ago. Reptiles developed into forms like contemporary lizards with a backbone, allowing them to survive and travel on land. While amphibians started to diversify, deadly venomous centipedes two meters long scurried about alongside giant cockroaches and scorpions as big as one meter long. These amphibians were similarly enormous, and some species were predators with fangs like those of modern-day alligators and crocodiles, growing to lengths of over six meters. Some species have evolved to develop thicker, scalier skin, which helps them with their physical issues, drying up if they they spent too much time away from the water, and when amphibians first developed the ability to deposit amniotic, or breathing eggs on land, everything changed since these animals could now live outside and away from water, not near water sources. The roughly 300 million year old Permian epoch replaced the earlier Carboniferous era. The first major plant eating and meat eating creatures emerged during this time, about 50 million years before the dinosaurs, when all the continents were one enormous land mass known as Pangaea. While some of these species were around at the time, they were really more closely linked to mammals and reptiles than to dinosaurs. Another new reptile on the planet was the iconic Dimetrodon, which grew to about 5 meters long and had a large sail on its bag that is likely used to regulate its body temperature. One of these strange creatures was the Isdiplosur abscess, which had a head that was shaped like an a boomerang and looked a little like a salamander and averaged about 1 meter in length. Mammals grew more and more dominant throughout the Permian era. The largest of them were what were known as Gorgon options, who were a group of enormous animals that resembled bears, and each had a unique set of fangs with a particular purpose. These creatures range in size from less than a kilogram to more than a ton, and can be either herbivores or carnivores. Cynodonts were the name given to one group of these animals. These creatures displayed communal behavior, and there is some fossil evidence that suggests they hunted in groups in the waters. Their name implies dog, like teeth, with real fish rays and sharks with bony skeletons proliferated. Insects developed an adapted mouth component that allowed them to puncture objects, just as coral and sponges on land. 
However, the Permian era abruptly came to an end around 252 million years ago due to a catastrophic event that led to a mass extinction. In 2001, scientists made the startling discovery that a massive comet or asteroid similar to the one that wiped out the dinosaurs 200 million years earlier was to blame. But how did they arrive at this conclusion? Greetings in dimensions that could only have come from space. The asteroid or comet's width was believed believed to be between 6 and 12 kilometers. Aside from this revelation, scientists estimate that the hit would have unleashed energy 1 million times higher in diameter than the largest earthquake of the previous century. There is some evidence that Siberia and China, as they are today, had previously endured volcanic eruptions of unfathomably great magnitude, which produced obstructive dust and ash clouds, sunlight. In addition, did you know that over the course of a million years, three million cubic kilometers of lava erupted from the Earth, burying the whole globe in a layer of dead marine species, and 90% of all living land animals perished during this time? It would appear that this would be the last stage in the evolution of life on Earth, and that it would be entirely wiped out, yet a new era, the period of the dinosaurs, would then start. Would you like to learn more about what transpired following the Great Permian Extinction, and how the famous dinosaurs emerged? If so, let us know in the comments below. We appreciate your interest and encourage you to check back often.